Hey, welcome back everyone to Upper Michigan today. We are focusing on epilepsy month uh, in the awareness this month and uh, we have a full show of guests. We've added another member to our guest panel here today. Uh, we have Shannon with the uh, Epilepsy Foundation of Michigan. Thank you so much to coming into the conversation. Uh, first of all, explain what the foundation is and, and your involvement. Sure, in all of this. sure. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for bringing us here today. Super excited to be with you all. Um, so my name is Shannon Wade. I'm the Education and Outreach Specialist for the Foundation, and we are um, really excited to be here. Um, the mission of the Foundation is to lead the, um, you know, over the challenges of epilepsy. So we want to assist people who are um, dealing with epilepsy, walking through their epilepsy journey, um, and we want to be a resource to them. So what we like to say is we're kind of like that middleman. You go and see your physician, and then what are those other supports, those daily living things that you need supports with, whether that be transportation, education, um, you know, getting the word out there, advocacy, that type of thing. So we kind of fill in that middle piece and we bring that community piece all together. So how do you how do you show up here in the Upper Peninsula and how do you address those gaps in, in health care that you know, we, we face when we live in a rural area. Yeah, absolutely. So the foundation this year alone has been working on rural health initiatives. Um, and we were lucky enough to partner with these ladies here um, and kind of join their, their cause and their mission, which is really fabulous. So we're excited to be here. We have been doing outreaches um, throughout the entire state of Michigan, specifically to rural areas. Um, we haven't had the feedback as much as we want to. So this is really a great opportunity for us to get more people involved and let them know that we exist. Um, the foundation has been around for 75 years and we have resources for all of the things and even in rural, rural places um, we have a lot of online virtual opportunities and so just getting the opportunity to connect with people is going to be really key and I think um, a place for many. And you're doing the training tonight. Yes. Uh, what's going to be involved in that? And yeah, sure. I'm, I know you're looking forward to I it. Am, I am. I'm very much looking forward to this. This is kind of my passion as well. I have a daughter with epilepsy, and so um, like these ladies here, you know, there's a lot of learning. Um, tonight we were going to go over seizure recognition. What does se what do seizures look like? We know that there's over 30 different types of seizures, um, and they all look and feel very different. So um, being able to recognize them is going to be the key to knowing how to support somebody who's having a seizure. So we're going to talk about that as well as seizure first aid. What do we do? How do we assist somebody having a seizure? Um, what are the proper steps? What do we not do? We're going to talk about some myths and stereotypes and then also share some resources on how we can be of assistance to the community. And we can't go through the full training here on Upper Michigan today, but we do have a couple of videos um, just showing a little bit about kind of the, what you're going to be covering. So the first video is of, um, a, do you have your rundown? With you? um, <laughs> I, I do have my rundown. I do okay, have good. it. Okay, I want to make focal sure. Focal seizure. It's a, what, which one? Focal, a fo seizure. focal seizure. So sure. this is, uh, if you want to just go ahead and start playing that. And what I found this to be interesting in, in when you, in the email that you sent me mm -hmm. is that people often don't realize someone's having a seizure and so mm -hmm. it can lead to unnecessary arrest yes. or, or things happening that don't need to escalate to that level. Yes, exactly. So one thing we'll be doing in this next year is actually doing a lot of first responder, EMS training, you know, that type of thing. Because in this situation where you're seeing this video, um, the police were actually called because this could be something that maybe appeared to be a drug or alcohol abuse or maybe a psychogenic like mm -hmm, episode. Mm -hmm. Um, so just really making people aware that when you see a change in somebody's behavior, maybe there's also something else going on. Sure, sure. And I think we have another one, Tia. Absence seizure. Let's take a look at that. And again, this is just another example. And what I found interesting here is that he kind of just continued on with his life. Yes. So he has a seizure, but never really stops. Yes. So you'll see here in just a moment, he'll have a break and he'll just kind of daze off to the side. Here he goes right now. Um, so people who have absence seizures, they can have upwards of hundreds a day. So if you imagine, you know, a student having up, upwards of a hundred of these mm -hmm. a day, um, they're missing a lot of education. They're missing mm -hmm. a lot of learning. There could be some things that we need to address. So the goal is, is to identify the seizure and get proper treatment so we're not having seizures happen so often. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, and just based on the looks of it, this isn't what I would typically think of mm -hmm. what a seizure Yes. looks like it almost looks like the student is just zoning out yes. for a minute and speaking to all those stereotypes that we talk about right usually the first thing we think of when a se we think of a person having a seizure is somebody collapsing to the floor their body shaking and stiffening um, and usually probably because of flashing lights when that's 
kind of stereotypical, um, mm -hmm. and that is actually not the most common type of seizure that there is. That's a tonic-clonic or grand mal seizure. Um, so there's a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, so we definitely encourage everybody to come out tonight. And if they can't come out tonight, um, we have online resources as well. Um, but I think for the epilepsy community, we thank you for um, learning just because this keeps everybody safe. So the event tonight is open to the public? It is, yes. Okay, yes. so give us the where, the when, what do people need to know? Yeah, so it's gonna be taking place tonight at Northern Center um, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. You can just come, it'll be on Peninsula 2, I understand, yep. I haven't been there myself. <laughs> um, but we will be there welcoming you, we'll have resources for you, you can ask questions, Q&A, um, and we're really just excited to be with the community and, and make a place for people to connect. All right, well, we'll put all that information online if you are interested in attending the training. Yeah. And uh, we, like you said, there's a lot of online resources, so we want to talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that. We have to take another quick break, but we'll also share the website Perfect. on how you can find everything online. So we'll be right back. <laughs>